Hello, in this video, we are going to cover functions and we've actually been using functions quite a bit in Python. We've just been using the built-in ones, but we can actually create our own. So the benefit of creating functions, it allows us to encapsulate code. And if we need to reuse that code several times in different locations, we just call the function name, also referred to as methods, and it just runs that code. So one, it reduces the amount of code you need to write. Two, if you need to update the code, the actual functionality, let's say, you don't need to update it in, let's say, 10 different locations where you, where, you, where you have used it. It's updating the original function, and it just propagates throughout your application. So the syntax of a function is like this. DEF, so just short for define, specify your function name. So the function name, I'm just gonna call it awesome function. So it is an awesome function. Then you just, open close bracket you can specify parameters as well we'll cover that very very soon and now you just put a colon at the end make sure it's indented because that's how python knows that all the code belongs to this function and now you just do what you want to do with the function so if i were to let's say do let's say if i just did print so if i just printed something really really simple so if i just printed hello world and let's say if i printed something else my name is bob and no i cannot fix it and then at the end it just needs to have a return statement this just returns a value to the point where the method was called you don't need to have a value always returns so you can just leave this as you know default but and as you can see once the python id knows that you've got a return clicking enter will redent it or i think that's going to be sorted at the indentation so if i were to do say awesome function this is how you call it you do awesome function open close bracket specify any option parameters as we don't have any we're not going to specify any so if i run it see what we get so hello world my name is bob and i cannot fix it and if i were to duplicate this several times it will run it several times we'll show you that in a second another thing that another thing we can add is like just essentially a function doc string and this is just like you can think of it as like some sort of description of the function so if i would say this function is awesome and so yeah i'm just going to do don't want that and if we run this we should get this printed out three times so we have simplified six lines of code because it would be you know two times i mean three times this so it'd be six in total to three lines my thinking but you know there's still technically five lines and then you've got you know this as well but obviously the more complex you get the more time you use it the more beneficial it becomes that's how you call a function so now let's have a look at passing a value in so if i create another function so if i do def awesome function two and i want to call this number you could specify multiple values and just separate them by a comma so i'll call it number one number two and in here the doc string i'll just say adds the numbers together so this will add the number together obviously this is a very simple operation but you get the picture and let's say if i you could either store it in a variable and return that but we can just do return and just do it in line so we just do number one plus number two and something i'm missing something what am i missing i feel like i why is why is the indentation not working the way I want it to? So I'm returning a value. Mm. 
Okay, let's take a look. This indentation wasn't working, but it might just be this ID, for example. So if we go back and we just print out, so we're going to print out awesome function two, specify two value five and six, and see what we get. So we get 11 because it's added to them together and returned it. So it returns it back to the point at which it is called, which is here. So it's the same thing as putting 11 there. That's the best way you can think of it. So there's you know a bunch of other things you can do with functions as well. And when passing in values of parameters, you can pass them by reference or by values. All parameter arguments in the Python language are passed by reference. So it just means if you change, you know, what a parameter refers to within a function, the change also reflects back in the calling function. So that's just something to bear in mind. So if I were to do def change function, and I'll just call this number one, and again, this does not conflict with this because this has local scope. This can only be used within this variable. So if I have a variable here, sign a value of five, and if I were to print out var one, now in here, if I did um, change function, again, this doc string is optional. Now if I did var, not var one, number one, equals eight and if i just did return so we're not actually returning any value if i print out var one again let's see what we get so we get 11 and 5 and 5 so what have what has happened so let's take a look at this so we had a value of 5 assigned to it and then we passed it in so the argument was passed in like so and it worked you know fine i think i may have said it was passed in by reference passed in by value if you pass in something like a dictionary for example or some sort of other sequence that will get passed in by value and if you modify it, that will you know have modifications that affect the previous original variable so as an extra task check that out and i think that again that was just a mistake on my part in between the reference and the value so like i said you can have parameters also known as arguments and we have one right here you can have as many as you want you just separate it by a comma it is really that simple you can also have default arguments so if for example we did def default arg let's say if i had var1 in here and if i do equals 8 for example that means if you do not assign a value if you do not pass in a value it will just pass in 8 so what we're going to do is return the value so var1 times by 2 that's all we're going to do and now we're going to print off default arg and we're going to pass in a value of 9 so we're going to do the same but this time we're not actually going to pass anything in and let's see what we get so we get 8 and 16 so why do we get that so with the first one we passed in a value of 9 so var1 got overridden with 9 9 times 2 is 18 but the second one we didn't actually pass in a parameter so we had a default parameter of 8 8 times 2 is 16 hence why it got printed out like that as an extra task i want you to have a look at what happens if you don't have a default argument so it's just like var1 for example but you don't pass in a parameter but look you will get some sort of error and the other thing to bear in mind is if you are creating multiple arguments like this for example all default arguments must be at the end that's just something to bear in mind because otherwise the compiler won't know the first parameter is it for which you know 
prime derivative for each argument. So again, that's something to bear in mind. The return statement is really useful as it's return value, but you always need it, but you might not always specifically use it to return some sort of value. Another thing I want to cover is global and local variables. And a global variable such as, let's say var global equals one, for example, can be used in all of these methods. That's a global variable. And as the next test point to try using it, you just do something like var global and you can use it. And you could assign it something you could just you know do before mathematical operation. But variable that are created inside, like like number one, for example, is only limited to the local scope. That's again something to bear in mind where it's created here, whether I create a number number two here and so find a value of nine, that has pure local scope. So that means I can't use it outside of the method here, here, or in another method. So make sure you understand the difference between local and global scope variables. So that's it for this video. There's quite a bit more to it with function, but again, they're just extra nuances. I'll provide a link with this video so we can check all of that out. But if you're comfortable with everything we've covered in here, you're all good to go. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome functional video.